And uh, this evening, we're going to start another series. And we're going to look at Christ in the Old Testament. Christ in the Old Testament. And we're going to start with a few verses out of the book of Genesis uh, this evening. And it's, to me, it's an absolutely fascinating topic. Um, well, let's, let's have a prayer and we'll dive in, okay? Dear Lord, we just love you and thank you again so much for this blessed and beautiful day and your kindness and mercy, the grace and goodness you show us, dear Lord. You're such a good Heavenly Father and we love and praise you for that. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to get together in the house of God and to uh, gather with your people and have a little Bible study, Lord, and enjoy some Christian fellowship, dear Father. We pray for all the dear souls on our hearts. Lord, we pray for all the issues that are going on. Lord, we pray for all the kids up the hill. We ask your very richest blessings upon each one of them. Thank you, Lord, for the workers that are up there and for the kids as well. Lord, and for all the blessings that you're giving us here at this church and amongst our families, Lord, and individually as well. I uh, pray now that you'll give us uh, wisdom and insight from your Holy Spirit as we study the precious eternal word of God. And Lord, we want to tell you that we love you and we thank you again. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. Everybody said? All righty, tidy. Here's the deal on, on Christ in the Old Testament. Everything in the Bible is about Christ. He said, I, yeah, he's the living word. So when you saw Jesus, you saw the Bible, the whole thing. Every prophecy is about him. Every, well, everything, every word, every chapter, every letter, every piece of every word of the word of God, it's all about Jesus. So once you, once you uh, practice for a while, you'll get to where you can find Jesus on every page of your Bible. So we won't, we won't study every page of the Old Testament through our study here, but uh, I would like to uh, point out some places where you find, uh, find the Lord Jesus Christ. There really is, and from God's perspective, there's, there's really just one story. There's really just one story in, in, in all of time and creation, and it's this, that Jesus Christ came to be the Savior of the world. This is how God gets himself a big family. This is how Jesus gets a, um, a bride. This is how uh, heaven is filled with children of God. This is, that's the purpose. If you start before the beginning and you end after the end, you'll find that everything in the middle all culminated in that one, in that one thing, that you see heaven at, at the end of the book and you see what God has accomplished there. And he dots every I and crosses every T, fulfills every prophecy and everything's all done. You see the, the end result of, of what God was successful at, and it is the exaltation of Jesus Christ as being king and Lord over all things, heaven and earth, and um, the, uh, the infinite expression of God's infinite love in the salvation of mankind. So that's, what, that's what everything is about. So you just, it's like reading any other book. You know what it was all about and what happens. Look at the end, and there, and there you go, okay? So when we back up from that, we find that all down through there, God keeps telling that same story over and over and over and over again. And finally, you get to where it's just, it's everywhere. It's, it's just on, on every page. So let's look at a few verses here out of the book of Genesis. I'll show you what I'm talking about here tonight, okay? <clears throat> we'll start at the beginning, Genesis 1, 3. And God said, let there be light. And even this is a picture of Jesus Christ, okay? Because we read in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So Jesus came, and He was a fulfillment of, uh, of what God said in Genesis 1-3. He looked, you know, darkness was on the face of the, of the deep and the Spirit of God brooded on the face of the waters, you know, and God said, let there be light. And so in the same way, when Jesus came, he looked into a dark world of spiritual darkness and the light came, okay, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the light of the world, right? Now, one of my other interests in Bible study is Bible numerology, which I find really fascinating as well. And uh, let me just give you a little clue here about, uh, about the book of John. Uh, well, in uh, the Bible in general. In the Bible, um, you know, different numbers represent different things, right? Like if I were to say, what was, what was the number 666 represent? You'd say? The beast, the Antichrist. If I were to say, what does the number 7 represent? You'd say? Completion and fulfillment. Okay, well, there's there more to it. And I don't have a, a complete list, but I got a few, all right? Here's one of my favorites. Uh, number 22. The number 22. The number 22 is the Bible word for word and for truth. 
and for light. The, uh, the Hebrew language has 22 letters. So the Old Testament was written, you know, with 22 as, a, as its basis. As a matter of fact, if you look at Psalm, Psalm 119, the longest chapter, longest something, okay? It's sections of eight, eight verses, eight verses, eight verses, eight verses. And each verse begins with the, with the, uh, with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So at the first eight, all those first eight verses would all begin with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, okay? I forget what it is. I don't, you know, Aleph or something like that, okay? But if it was in English, we'd say they, they'd all start with A. The next day, we'd start with B and down around the list, okay? And he's got eight verses for each of the, uh, each of the letters of the, of the Hebrew alphabet. And, and all those verses are about the Word of God, okay? Um, If Jesus is the light of the world, in, in, the gospel, in the gospel of John, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the gospel of John, the word, word, is used 22 times. In the gospel of John, the word, light, I think, is used 22 times. And in the gospel of John, the word, uh, truth, is used 23 times. 22 times by Jesus and once by Pilate he says what is what is truth you know and and in the gospel so in the gospel of John the number 22 la locks in the fact that that is the Bible number for for light for word and for you know that's it, and for for truth so when you when you see light show up you say okay we're talking about truth we're talking about the word we're talking about light and then it's all interchangeable there in number 22. So God uses, and God uses um, Old Testament and New Testament and, and, uh, and numbers, and he melds it all together perfectly and seamlessly from one end to the other. It's just, it's, it's a miracle. The Bible, is, the Bible is the greatest miracle you can hold in your hand because of what God has done with dozens and dozens of writers over hundreds and hundreds of years, two languages, so many empires, and yet it's all connected like, uh, uh, like, like Jesus' robe that was made from just one piece of fabric without a seam. That's the way the Word of God is, okay? All right, any questions about all that? All right, well, let's just plow on then. Genesis 1, verse 20, 21. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. In the, in the Bible, water, water can stand for several things. Water is, um, can stand for a lot of peoples. You know, in the book of Revelation, the beast came up out of the, out of the seas. And it's, it's, waters are, are different peoples and seas. But also, Jesus is, is living water, right? Okay, and we're supposed to be like a tree planted beside the living water. Jesus told, uh, did I put it on here? Yeah, in John chapter 4, he's talking to the woman at the well, right? Okay, she's up there, and she's a, a Samaritan woman, and uh, uh, he asked her for a drink of water, and they get into a, a discussion. And Jesus said to her, whoever drinks of this water in that well, talked about Jacob centuries before, will thirst again. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I give him shall come to him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life when uh, when Jesus was in Jerusalem uh, at, on, at that last week um, during Passover week they would have two types of ceremonies in the evening they'd have a fire ceremony and in the morning they'd have a water ceremony the fire ceremony was they'd be in the temple and the priest would do like twirling fire sticks and all that stuff and the choir would be singing I would love to sing that but in the morning it was a water ceremony so the priest would get up by the altar and have these big pitchers of water, and he would and they would pour it out and he would pour it out and he would pour it out, and it was a, a, a water was a sacrifice was an oblation, uh, oblation that's not right it, that's why you burn something off isn't it? What what's the water thing? It's an oblation too. It's an oblation offering. Anyway, who knows? Okay, I think it is. All right, but anyway, they pour they, they pour out water. Okay, remember David in the cave and the guy and the pretty mighty men went and got him a. 
uh, the, the water to drink because he wanted it. And he looked at it and he said, I can't drink this. That's the blood of my men. And he poured it out. So, yeah, and, and uh, I don't remember. Okay, what, what the word is. But you know what I'm talking about, right? It's a sacrificial offering. Okay, it can be, it can be liquid, not just an animal. So anyway, um, Jesus on the great day of the feast uh, said, stood up in the midst of that. They had, they had uh, oh, they poured out water. And uh, he caught a blind man in, in, by the pool of Siloam. And he put water on his eyes. And he sent him whoever. And, or there was another guy. Somebody that he said, I want you to go wash in this, in this pool. And uh, you'll get your eyesight back. And I'm kind of mixing my, I'm mixing my little stories together. But you'll get the point. Okay. The idea is that Jesus stood up on that day. They had, they had poured out the water. And they're getting ready to make their little march down the prayer. Every, every day during this week to go down there and... Uh, and get some water or, or whatever. And that's when Jesus stood up and said, Whosoever is thirsty, let him come to me. And I will give him living water. And the water that I give will be springing out of him, out of his belly, a river of living water. So when you see, when you see water, again you think, well, this is a picture of Jesus. Living water means water, uh, water that is uh, moving, not stagnant. You know, I mean, there's cisterns and there's uh, wells. And then there's rivers and creeks and streams and lakes where there's a little wave action and a little current. But also it's water that supports life. Where they've got fish in it and all those things. So when you see in the creation, you see God said, it made it out of water and let the waters bring forth life. In the same way, that's Jesus. Picture of Jesus being the living water. And again, in Genesis and on the day of the great feast and the woman at the well. And right on down, you get to heaven. You see that, well, let's, let's back up. In, in Eden... There was a, a, a fountainhead of water that split into four different rivers and went four different directions. When you go to the other end of the book in Revelation, you find that out from under the throne came a great mighty river of living water and flowed out across the landscape of heaven and the tree of life uh, grew up beside it. Okay? Huh? Libation. <laughs> Thank you. Not oblation. Oblation just sounds nasty, doesn't it? It's like when you burn a, burn a ward off or something now. Yeah. Libation, that sounds so much better. <laughs> Thank you for that. Did you Google it? I did. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, bless, this is not right. <laughs> Libation. Thank you very much for that, because that, that would bother me until I got home and Googled it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Let's do a libation, not an oblation. Oh my goodness.